Stronger storms, longer heat waves, more intense flooding, crippling droughts. Suddenly, America's like the biggest oil producer and the biggest get. Uh, that was me, people. I just want you to. In his speech at the UN Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, Scotland, former President Barack Obama appeared to have a bit of amnesia in terms of his role in the climate crisis. So I have a couple clips here. And before I get to this, I want to say this speech was largely fine. In fact, some moments it was great. But the issue here isn't the speech. It's the context in terms of who is saying it. So let me play this first clip. And again, this is a good moment here if it weren't for the fact that this is Barack Obama saying this. And I'll be clear as to why that's the case after this clip. We are nowhere near where we need to be yet. For starters, despite the progress that Paris represented, most countries have failed to meet the action plans that they set six years ago. And the consequences of not moving fast enough are becoming more apparent all the time. Last month, a study found that 85% of the global population has experienced weather events that were more severe because of climate change. Stronger storms, longer heat waves, more intense flooding, crippling droughts. Parts of the world are becoming more dangerous to live in, triggering new migration patterns and worsening conflict around the globe. It's one of the reasons why uh, the U.S. Pentagon and other U.S. agencies have said that climate change poses a national security threat for the U.S. and for everyone else. All right, so I have a second clip from the speech coming up, but first off here, yes, Obama's right. Progress is not being made fast enough. Nothing wrong with this speech, nothing wrong with this clip. The issue is who is saying this. It's hard to take this man seriously on this issue when this is the reality when he was president. So this from The Guardian, and again, as with all my sources, I'll link it below the video in the description box on YouTube. They write here, Obama's dirty secret, the fossil fuel projects the U.S. littered around the world. Through the Export-Import Bank, the Obama administration has spent nearly $34 billion on dirty energy plants in countries from India to Australia to South Africa. So there are over, there were over 70 fossil fuel projects around the world that the Obama administration invested in. And here he is talking about how these countries aren't hitting their targets. I wonder why. It's really, like... I understand his desire to want to uh, clean his image up for climate activists, for progressives that, that understand his history and his actual impact. But at some point, like if, if you want to be taken seriously, you have to admit your role in all of this. Until you do that, it's hard to take speeches like this seriously. Not to mention in 2018, this is what Obama said. You know, I, I know we're an oil country. And uh, we need American energy, and, and by the way, uh, American energy production. Uh, you wouldn't always know it, uh, uh, but you know, it went up every year I was president. Um, and you know, that whole suddenly America's like the, the biggest oil producer and the biggest get uh, that was me, people. I just want you to. <laughs> so, so there's Obama in 2018 bragging about his role in increased oil production in the U.S. Like, again, how, how can you show up to a climate change conference discussing these issues in a serious way, in, in a well-communicated way? I watched the entire speech. It's about 50 minutes long. It's a good speech. But the fact that he is the one giving it kind of cuts into it. It, it ruins the speech. Because you can't take this guy seriously until he admits to being a part of this mess. Let me get to the second clip here that I want to show you. And this, again, gets to the Obama amnesia on the issue of climate change. There are workers and communities that still depend on coal for power and jobs. And they, yes, they are concerned about maintaining their wages. That's not unreasonable for them to be concerned about that. And the fact is, the truth is that transitioning from dirty energy to clean energy does have a cost. 
and it is not unreasonable for people who often are already economically vulnerable and maybe don't feel particularly politically powerful, it's not unreasonable for them to think that for all the highfalutin talk, some of those costs of transition will be borne by them, not by the more powerful and the privileged. That's not an unreasonable perspective for them to have. It's also why we need to make sure the people most affected by the transition to clean energy aren't the ones bearing most of the cost. They don't have any margin for error. I got to say, it's, uh, first of all, yes, Obama's correct. Exactly right once again. But it's wild to watch this clip knowing that Obama helped to take down Bernie Sanders in the Democratic primary. I'll give you more details on that in a second. Helped to do that when Bernie Sanders was the only candidate that had a real plan for workers, for blue-collar workers in the fossil fuel industry. So Obama's right. Yes, we have to, as I've discussed many times when discussing climate change and the transition away from fossil fuels, you have to center the workers in that. We have to be able to have those workers on board. You're getting, you're seeing a lot of conservative support from the fossil, from fossil fuel, blue collar workers, especially in Canada. This is a, a, a major issue. You're seeing a lot of that support go to conservative parties because they think that that's the only way they're going to keep their job. When in reality, there is another way. You can take care of those workers in the transition away. And Bernie had a plan for that. So this is from his website, his platform in 2020, a just transition for workers. This plan will prioritize the fossil fuel workers who have powered our economy for more than a century and who have too often been neglected by corporations and politicians. We will guarantee five years of a worker's current salary, housing assistance, job training, health care, pension support, and priority job placement for any displaced worker, as well as early retirement support for those who choose it or can no longer work. This was the only man with this kind of plan, taking care of the workers in that transition. And what did Obama do? Well, first of all, it was hinted back in 2019 that they would that they would intervene against Bernie. Obama privately vowed to intervene in primary to stop Bernie Sanders from winning nomination. That's from a Salon report. And then he did, in fact, do that. So this is from a Politico uh, report in uh, 2020. Barack Obama wins the Democratic primary, going on to say here, some of his aides now concede that behind the scenes, Obama played a role in nudging things in Biden's direction at the crucial moment when the Biden team was organizing former candidates to coalesce around Biden. Quote, I know he did a few things, said one longtime close advisor to Obama. He was talking to Biden regularly in that period. I don't know exactly what he said, but you can speculate. It's noteworthy that he called Klobuchar and others right when they got out. So Barack Obama in a key moment in the 2020 Democratic primary, helped to coalesce support around Joe Biden to push out Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders with the only bold response to the climate crisis, including actual help for blue collar workers. And here's Obama in this speech saying, we should help those workers. You can see why it's hard to take the guy seriously when uh, his actions speak a lot louder than his words. This was a great speech. I'll link to below the video. It's a good speech, but the wrong guy read it. 